Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't touch that dial. Listen to Blondie, brought to you by the Watertown Players. Before we join the bumsteads of Shady Lane Avenue, let's gather around the bandstand for a curtain raiser from Ashley Woodard. Raise that curtain, Ashley. Give my regards to Broadway. Remember me to Herald Square. Tell all the gang at 42nd Street that I will soon be there. Whisper of how I'm yearning to mingle with the old time throng. Give my regards to old Broadway. Say that I'll be there ere long. Give my regards to Broadway. Remember me to Herald Square. Tell all the gang at 42nd Street that I will soon be there. Whisper of how I'm yearning to mingle with the old time throng. Give my regards to old Broadway. Say that I'll be there ere long. Thank you, Ashley. This week's episode is being sponsored by the Watertown Players, your favorite community theater troupe for more than 30 years. You know, folks, they say that money is the root of all evil. Well, they may be right, but it sure comes in handy for things like paying your rent or paying your rent or paying your rent. Did I mention paying your rent? Well, the Watertown Players needs your help. We are always looking for both corporate and individual sponsors for Blondie, as well as for just, well, paying the rent. We will give you more information on how you can help at the end of this episode, so please stay tuned. The Watertown Players, dedicated to enriching the lives of those in this and surrounding communities through creativity, expression, and fun. And now for our weekly visit with the Bumsteads in their little home on Shady Lane Avenue. It's a little after 10 in the morning, and Blondie has just finished bathing and weighing the new member of the Bumstead family. <laughs> oh, that's a good girl. Now we'll turn you over and dust you off with some of this wonderful smelling talcum powder. My, you certainly are a healthy baby. If I can just keep you from shaking hands with any nasty old germs for a few more months, you'll have a pretty good start in life. <laughs> Goodness, what a wonderful smile. What was that for? Me or the talcum powder? For me? <laughs> Thank you, dear. That was very sweet of you. Now then, into your little bed you go. Oh, Blondie! I wonder what your father wants. I'll tuck you in and go and see. There you are. Sleep tight now. What is it, Dagwood? Oh, there you are, honey. Have you finished with the baby? Yes, dear. I just got through powdering her and putting her back in her bassinet. I guess I'll go in and see her. I wanted to. Uh, uh. Oh, what's the matter, Dagwood? It's a sneeze. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Achoo! Oh, you're not catching a spring cold, are you? No, no, it's just achoo! Dagwood, you are getting a cold. No, I'm sure I'm not, honey. Let me feel your forehead. Okay. Well, you don't seem to have a fever, but... Achoo! Gracious! I, I haven't got a cold, Blondie. I'm sure of it. I'm not sniffling at all. Listen. <sighs> See, there's nothing wrong with me at all. Dag Dagwood, I don't think you'd better go in to see the baby. She might catch whatever you have. Blondie, I haven't got anything. After all, she's my daughter too. I don't want anything to happen to her either. You're sure you're not catching anything? Positive. Well, maybe it's all right then. Sure, the first time I sneezed was when you came up to me just now. 
Uh, just feel my forehead again. It's perfectly normal. Yes, I guess it is, Dagwood, but... Achoo! There I go again. Dagwood, you mustn't go in to see the baby with that sneeze of yours. You don't suppose it would be all right if I held my finger under my nose so I wouldn't sneeze and then went in? No, I don't. Oh, gosh. It's not fair. A father not allowed to see his own child. What's happened to justice? Now, Dagwood. Well, for all the good I'm doing, I might as well be asleep. I guess I'll go and, and take a little nap. Hmm, what's Dagwood doing now? Well, taking a nap. <laughs> Sounds like he's having a dream. I'd better tiptoe out of here and let him have his 40 winks. This horse is dynamite. Oh, ouch. Three, four. Six seconds left to go. Five, six. Big night here. Madison Square Garden. Rodeo. The judges had the stopwatch on Daredevil Dagwood Bumstead riding Dive Bomber. A horse that's never been ridden before. What a ride Dagwood's giving him. What a ride, folks. Eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds are up. Bumstead rates top score. What's this, folks? What's happening now? That Bronco won't stop bucking. Oh, oh, ow! He's bucking higher and higher. 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. He's, he's high over the heads of the crowd. Wow! Up that time to the topmost rafters of Madison Square Garden. Good grief, they're going through the roof. No! Dagwood, wake up! Whoa, whoa, oh. Gosh, uh, gee, uh, whiz, oh, Blondie, uh, say, I had a dream. Yes, Dagwood. Gee, I dreamt I was Paul Carney, you know, the grand champion cowboy. Calm yourself, dear. It's about an hour later. Dr. Lewis has just finished looking over the Bumstead baby and... Well, Mrs. Bumstead, she looks like she's just fine. You've been taking very good care of her. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, Doctor, before you go, I wish you'd take a look at Mr. Bumstead. Oh? Spring fever? I don't know what it is, but he was sneezing terribly this morning. I wouldn't let him see the baby because I was afraid she might catch something from him. Oh, that was wise. Uh, where's Mr. Bumstead now? He's upstairs in his room, sulking. Well, I'll go up and have a look at him. I'll be up in a minute. All right, Mrs. Bumstead. Oh, Mr. Bumstead. Whatever you're selling, I don't want any. Uh, it's Dr. Lewis, Mr. Bumstead. I understand you're not feeling well? Oh, uh, come on in. Oh, thank you. In the first place, I'm perfectly healthy. I just sneezed a couple of times and Bondi practically quarantined me. I can't even see my own baby. It's an outrage. It's not fair. It's an injustice. Calm down, Mr. Bumstead. You seem to be pretty upset. I'm not upset. I'm fine. Oh, that's fine. Uh, just sit right down. I've been looking at that fine baby of yours. Oh, uh, how's the baby? Oh, fine, fine. That's fine. You know, she looks just like Blondie, doesn't she? Uh, yes. For a while, I was afraid she was going to look just like... Um... What's the matter? <clears throat> uh, just what seems to be the trouble, Mr. Bumstead? Well, I, uh... uh... Just keep your mouth open like that, Mr. Bumstead. Now, say ah. Uh, how does it look? A little like a coal mine. I just finished eating a stick of licorice. Ah, well, that explains it. Uh, you can shut your mouth now, Mr. Bumstead. Have you been sneezing since you came up here? Not at all. Oh, want to feel my pulse? Uh, no, thank you. Well, I just thought I'd suggest it. Uh, Mr. Bumstead, I don't think there's anything wrong with you at all. 
Uh, why don't you go downstairs and stop sulking? I haven't been sulking. I was unjustly exiled, that's all. And I resent it. Well, I'm afraid your sneezing was all psychological. Huh? Uh, yes. Naturally, everyone's been paying a lot of attention to the new baby, which means that perhaps you've been neglected a bit. Well, of course. I have been given a slight brush off, but I've been interested in the baby too. Is it all right if I see the baby? Well, certainly, Mr. Bumstead. That's all I wanted to know. Oh, is everything all right, Doctor? Yes. I think the sneezing was the result of the strain of the fatherhood. Nothing more. See, Blondie? I told you I was all right. There's nothing wrong with me at the... Uh, at... at... Uh, 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 it's you! Say! Dagwood, you're sneezing again. It's really nothing. I just... Achoo! Dagwood, stop it! I can't! Achoo! Uh, I seem to sneeze every time you come near me. Good heavens. I wonder if it's possible. If what's possible? I wonder if it's possible that your husband is allergic to you. Allergic? What's that? Well, it's a hypersensitivity. Sometimes heredity and sometimes acquired, but... Wait a minute. What is that in English? Roughly... It means there's something about Mrs. Bumstead that irritates you. Goodness gracious! What do you mean by saying anything like that? Trying to break up our home, aren't you? Dagwood, please, just a second. Let Dr. Lewis explain. Okay, start talking. Uh, I simply mean that there may be something Mrs. Bumstead has on. Uh, perfume, soap from a shampoo, lint from her clothes that irritates your system and makes you sneeze. If that's true, does it mean that every time he comes near me, he'll sneeze? I'm afraid it does, Mrs. Bumstead. Oh, dear. Is it hard to find out what there is about me that makes him sneeze? Well, you have to make a lot of sensitivity tests, but it's no harder than finding a needle in a haystack. That's encouraging. Oh, Dagwood, that's awful. Just think. Now, Blondie, don't get too upset about this. Oh... Well, anyway, Mr. Bumstead, there's no reason why you couldn't be near your little daughter. I'm sure it'll be perfectly okay. I want to see her now, before something horrible happens to me. All right, Dagwood. Come on, let's go downstairs. Okay, Blondie. Achoo! Gosh, this is terrible. Mrs. Bumstead, I want you to give me a list of everything that you're wearing. This has only happened recently, hasn't it? Yes, just today. I never sneezed on account of Blondie before. Achoo! Well, I'm sure we'll find the answer to this. Oh, I certainly hope so. Nothing like it has ever happened to us. Well, here's the baby's room. Why don't you just go in and see her now, uh, Mr. Bumstead, by yourself? Okay. I'll just peep my head in and see how she is, uh, just to say hello. <laughs> Hello, precious. How are you, this... Achoo! Dagwood, come out of that room this minute. Holy smokes! Achoo! This is terrible! Achoo! I'm allergic to the baby, too! I'm allergic to everyone! My gosh! Maybe I'm allergic to myself! Well, Fuddle, that's the way things are. I'm practically in exile from my own home. You know, Dag, old boy, I think the trouble is entirely psychological. Huh? It's all in your mind. Hmm. Uh, the doctor said something about that first, uh, before he got the allergy idea. What you need is to spar a few rounds with a psychiatrist. What'll the psychiatrist do to me? Oh, just ask a few questions to see if you're inhibited or repressed or something. Say... I've got a friend who dabbles in psychiatry. We'll go over to his house now and have him apply a couple of coats of Freud on you. I don't know. What kind of guy is he? Well, he's sort of a Class B screwball, but it's worth trying anyway. Okay, Fuddle. I'm desperate. I'll try anything once. Edgar, this is my friend, Dagwood Bumstead. I'm very glad to know you. You should be. Huh? 
I told him you'd give him a little workout with the psychoanalysis. Sit down, Mr. Bumstead. Okay. Uh, this won't hurt, will it? Not at all, Mr. Bumstead. I'm going to take a little trip through your mind. Pretty barren country around there, Edgar. <laughs> Quiet, please. Mr. Bumstead, do you dream? I should say so. Why, this afternoon I closed my eyes for a few minutes on the couch, and I dreamed I was in a rodeo in Madison Square Garden. Hmm, horse complex. I was on a bucking bronco, and he kept bucking higher and higher, and finally me and the horse went right up through the roof. Ah, frustration. He sounds a little wacky, doesn't he, Edgar? Yes, that's quite possible. Probably dropped on his head sometime. Could be. Mr. Bumstead, shut your right eye. Okay. Now the left eye. The left eye too, huh? All right. Now. Do you see anything? No. Interesting, isn't it? Look, I don't think you know what my trouble is. You see, I sneeze every time I get close to my wife, and I think it's because... Now don't try to confuse me with facts. Let me go ahead. Tell me, Mr. Bumstead, do you ever see green dragons with orange eyes, platinum hair, and web feet? Uh... Occasionally, in my dreams. And do they follow you everywhere you go? No, I don't think so. That's funny. Mine do. Holy smoke! I'm going to get out of here. I don't think we're getting anywhere at all. Neither do I. Perhaps some other time when I'm not so busy. Busy? What are you doing, Edgar? It's a secret, but I'm building something. Oh, you are? Well, I'll have to get back to my tinker toys. Goodbye. Come on, Fuddle. Yeah. So long, Edgar. A fine friend you have, Fuddle. That Edgar is a refugee from a cuckoo clock. Well, nothing ventured, nothing lost, I always say. What's Blondie doing about this? I don't know, but if I sneeze every time I get within a couple of feet of her, I'm going to pitch a pup tent on the lawn and live there. Oh, not that, Dag. You can move in with us. Gee, Fuddle, you're a real friend. Aw, oh, thanks, Dag. I'll give you a special price on our guest room, too. I should have known there was a catch to any suggestion of yours. I'm going to go home and refuse to sneeze. That's all there is to it. I'll demonstrate my willpower. From now on, I, Dagwood Bumstead, will definitely not sneeze. <laughs> I will not sneeze. I will not sneeze. I will not sneeze. I positively will not sneeze. Oh, Blondie! Oh, Dagwood, where have you been? I've just been psycho. Uh, psychia. Uh, psycho. Uh, I've just been talking with one of Fuddle's screwball friends. I was worried about you. I mean, after what happened and everything... You better not come any closer. Blondie, I'm going to fight this out. It's a simple matter of mind over matter, or something like that. Dr. Lewis said it was more than that. Well, I'm going to defy that allergic business. I'm going to refuse to sneeze. Uh, come a little closer. All right, Dagwood, but it'll start all over again. I'm not going to have my home broken up by something that can't be explained in one-syllable words. I'm going to be firm about this. Walk a little closer. Oh, goodness, Dagwood. You haven't sneezed yet. <laughs> uh, I'm winning. I won't sneeze. I won't sneeze. I won't sneeze. A little closer. Why, Dagwood, it is working. I knew it would. Uh, come a little closer yet. Ouch! What's wrong? You're standing on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Now what? I've conquered! I've won! Give me a little kiss. Gee, I thought I'd never be able to give you a kiss without your sneezing. Dagwood, you're wonderful. Oh, well, Blondie, uh, uh, I won't sneeze. Uh, 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 gee, it went away. Oh, Dagwood, I'm proud of you. Just a little willpower, that's all. 
I knew I could lick it. Let's go in and look at the baby. She's sleeping now, I think. I'll be very quiet. All right. Shh. Gee, there she is. Isn't she the sweetest thing? I'll say. I wonder what she's dreaming about. Not much of anything, I guess. Gosh, she's sleeping just as peacefully as a baby, isn't she? She is a baby. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ha, ha, ha. Dagwood, don't sneeze. I can't help it. Ha, ha, ha. Dagwood, remember your willpower. Remember your willpower. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, Yeah, remember. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, now I've done it. Oh, it's not your fault, Dagwood. There, there, dear. Go back to sleep. Achoo! Oh, Blondie, what am I going to do? Just wait a minute. Go back to sleep, sweetheart. Close your eyes. That's it. Back to sleep, dear. All right, Dagwood. I think she's going to drop right off now. Gosh, Blondie, I'm allergic to my own child. But you're not allergic to me anymore. No, I guess not. I got over that, but... Achoo! Oh, Dagwood! Now I'm right back again where I star... 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 Achoo! Right where I began. Now, Dagwood, we'll find out what this is. It just takes a little time, that's all. I'll be an old man before we solve this. Our daughter will be grown up and get married. And I'll have to watch the wedding from across the street with a pair of field glasses. This is awful. Now, Dagwood, don't let your imagination run away with you. Well, it's either that, or I spend practically the rest of my life sneezing. Gosh, I'll be called Gazootheit Bumstead. Gazootheit. Oh, Blondie. I'll call Dr. Lewis up and see if he's ready to make the tests on you now. Maybe he'll find out the very first thing. What chance is there of that? Well, you can't tell. He's taken samples of everything I wear, and something will give us the clue. I hope. Well, Mr. Bumstead, there are some 5,280 things you may be allergic to. Holy smokes! How do you find out which one is making me sneeze? It's just a simple process of elimination. Now, number one. Here's a lock of Mrs. Bumstead's hair. I'll just wave this under your nose. Okay, doctor. Well, is there any reaction? <laughs> it tickles. But it doesn't make you sneeze, does it? No. Good. It's you. Ah, it does make you sneeze. I'll make a note of that. Have you ever tested anyone else for this thing? Oh, yes. It's a hobby of mine. I have one man I've been testing for 11 years. Now, number two. Here's some fuzz from her woolen skirt. You may be sensitive to it, too. I'll wave this under your nose. It doesn't bother me at all. Well, of course you won't get a positive reaction on everything. I suppose not. Achoo! Hmm, very interesting. I'll make a note of that, too. And now some lint from Mrs. Bumstead's apron. Achoo! Achoo! Well, I'll make two notes of that, Mr. Bumstead. You seem to be allergic to everything Mrs. Bumstead was wearing. Then why didn't I sneeze when I saw her a little while ago? I don't know unless you're just stubborn. Shall we try this handkerchief? Okay. Wave it under my nose. Well? Achoo! Uh, make a note of that. Oh, thank you. I will, Mr. Bumstead. Frankly, I don't know just how to go about this. Oh, Dr. Lewis, how's it coming along? Mrs. Bumstead, your husband's case baffles me. Never heard of anything quite like it. He seems to be allergic to almost everything. It's very unusual. I was afraid of this. The next thing, he'll be wanting to put me under a glass in the Smithsonian Institute. I'm afraid I'd better do a little extensive reading and checking before I try another test. There's undoubtedly some very simple answer, but I don't know what it is. Are we all through, then? For the time being. 
But what's going to happen in the meantime? Well, I presume Mr. Bumstead will continue to sneeze. That's a fine future. You'll just have to keep away from Mrs. Bumstead, the baby, and your son, Baby Dumpling, and the dog as well. Even Daisy, too? And just when she's about to become a mother? Oh, I'm afraid so, Mr. Bumstead. You're probably allergic to them, too. I'm left all alone. What will I do? Well, you can always play solitaire. Goodbye. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, uh, thanks loads. You've been a big help. Dagwood, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so am I. Oh, Dagwood. What's the matter, honey? Look at your arms. They've got red splotches all over them. Dagwood, you're breaking out in a rash. Too. This episode of Blondie is being produced and sponsored by the Watertown Players. You know, folks, yesterday I ran a marathon. I'm telling you, that was the most difficult four blocks of my life, but it certainly was worth it. I came in first in my age group. Of course, I was the only one in my age group, but still. Anyway, as I was crawling that last block, it came into my mind that putting on a production with the Watertown Players is kind of like running a marathon. You have to train for a marathon, just like you have to rehearse a play. You have to wear the proper clothes for running, just like you have to wear a proper costume for a play. And you have to have adoring marathon watchers cheering for you when you cross the finish line, just like you have to have adoring fans in the audience cheering for the actors during the curtain call. We are eagerly awaiting to hear you cheering for our actors once again. So be sure to keep following the Watertown players on Facebook so you don't miss the next production. Watertown Players, dedicated to enriching the lives of those in this and surrounding communities through creativity, expression, and fun. It's a moment later. Dagwood is standing in the middle of the living room looking at his arms where a new catastrophe has broken out. Holy smoke, Blondie! And now I've got a rash! Goodness gracious! That must be caused by whatever it is you're allergic to. Gee, I'm just a playground for minor irritations. I can't figure out what's causing all of this. Yeah, it's starting to itch now. Have you got any powder I can put on it? All right, dear. Oh, don't scratch it. Hurry up, then. I'm getting the itch to scratch. Here we are, Dagwood. We'll just put a little of this on. It's the powder I use on the baby. Mrs. Fuddle gave it to me this morning. Oh, uh, that's fine. Achoo! Blondie, don't shake that powder around. Oh, let me out of here. What's the matter? I can't stand that stuff. It's driving me. <coughs> Holy Pete! Blondie, I can't breathe around here. I'm going outside. What happened to you, Dagwood? I don't know, uh, but I've been driven out of my own home now. This is the beginning of the end. Dagwood, wait a minute. Huh? That powder. That's what's back of all the trouble. Say, maybe you're right. That must be it. Mrs. Fuddle just gave it to me today. And then when I put some on your arms, it made you sneeze. There must be something in the powder you're allergic to. Holy smokes, Blondie. I guess you're right. Maybe we've conquered it at last. I'll wash the talcum powder off the baby right away, and we'll see if everything is all right then. All right, Precious, we'll take you to see your father. I'm afraid we've caused him a lot of trouble today with that powder, but I think we've fixed that now. Well, here we go. <laughs> ah, there she is. Say hello to Daddy, dearest. Boy, she said it. Well, it certainly sounded like it to me anyway. Gosh, that's great. 
she's not supposed to say Dada until she's nine months old. Yeah, isn't it wonderful what a bumstead can do with a, a little willpower? I should say so. You haven't sneezed either, Dagwood. I guess we won't have to worry about that anymore. Nope, everything's okay. <laughs> yes, sir, you're the smartest baby in the world. Why, I'll bet that in a few months you'll be... Uh, uh, Huh? Oh, Dagwood, you're not going to sneeze, are you? I don't know. Huh? Huh? Achoo! Oh, dear. Get away from the baby. Don't worry, Blondie. This isn't as bad as, as bad as you think. But why isn't it? Because this time, I think it's only a spring cold. Isn't that wonderful? Achoo! And so we leave Blondie and Dagwood of Shady Lane Avenue. We invite you to listen the next time we join the Bumsteads. Our next episode is entitled, Dagwood Takes the Stand. Sounds like a hoot and a half to me. This week's episode, Gesundheit Bumstead, featured the voice talents of Greg Coots as the Doctor, Matt Emerson as Fuddle, Carl Zarling as Edgar, Lane Landowski as Dagwood, and, of course, Lisa Steffel as Blondie. This week's episode was brought to you by the Watertown Players. Looking for quality, affordable entertainment? Well, look no further, friends. The Watertown Players are here for you with each and every episode of Blondie. And more productions are always in the works. This is your announcer, Jim Steffel, thanking you for supporting the Watertown Players and our continuing episodes of Blondie. And here is the information that I promised when this episode first started. Do you have a business and would like to get more bang for your advertising buck? Send us a private message on Facebook to find out how you can sponsor an episode or two of Blondie. And for those of our listening audience who would like to make a tax-deductible donation to the Watertown Players, please text BLONDIE to 44321. That's BLONDIE. B-L-O-N-D-I-E to 44321. Thank you and good night.